Hello guys and welcome to this series where we're gonna learn how to create a backend using Node.js and Express. So we're gonna be creating our APIs using the Express package. Now, if you don't have Node.js installed yet, you need to install it first so that we can use NPM. NPM is a Node package manager and Node is simply just a runtime for JavaScript to run a JavaScript code outside the browser. So you can choose which operating system you have and then after installing uh, Node.js, you can make sure that it's successful by going to your terminal and type npm-version. If it shows you the version, then you're ready and you're set to start with this video. In this series, you will learn how to create APIs in the easiest way, and then we're going to start improving as we go through the episodes until we separate our code into different folders such as routers, controllers, and services. We're going to be using MongoDB as our database. We will use a popular package called Mongoose. We will learn how to create a global error handling, um, try catch blocks. We will use async await. Um, we will be following best practices. And we will also learn how to validate the data coming from our body and so much more. So stay tuned and trust me, you will be learning a lot. First thing I want to do is I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it node.js backend and let's open it up I'm going to be using VS Code as an IDE you can open VS Code and open file and then open folder and choose this folder or you can just from the terminal go to this directory and type code dot now let's go ahead and open our terminal so new terminal and let's create our app settings.json file so to do that let's type npm in it and then we need to start pressing enter i don't want to change anything here so now as you can see to the left side you have this package.json file where we have some information about this application such as the name the version the description and other stuff as well i'm gonna go here and create a new file you can create it anything you want but usually the convention is app.js or server.js i'm gonna call it server.js and now we're going to be using a package called express which we're going to download so let's go to our terminal and type npm i or npm install and express so express is a web framework which is very popular in the node.js world uh, it's going to make our life easier when creating apis and the first thing we want to do here is let's go ahead and create a variable i'm going to call it express and we're going to import it from express so let's require express and then i'm going to create another variable i'm going to call it app and we need to create an express application and for that we need to use the express function if we hover the mouse over it as you can see creates an express application and we set this express application to this variable right here now let's add a body parser so our request bodies should be parsed into JSON. Usually when creating an API and RESTful APIs, the format used is JSON. And we, need, we can set that here by saying app.use. And then here, let's specify express.json. This is a function that will parse, uh, which is actually a middleware, which will parse JSON only when body is uh, present in our requests. So now we want to add a listener to our application and we need to listen to a certain port so that we can send requests to that port. Let's say app.listen. And then here I'm going to specify a hard-coded port for now. I'm going to say 3000. Don't worry, we're going to be using a configuration file where we're going to set this variable. And we're also going to be using environment variables, which is the best practice. And don't worry if this sounds scary, we're going to see it and it's not going to be hard at all. And then here, let's create a function. I'm going to be using the arrow function. And then here, let's say console.log app listening on port 3000. Let's save that. And then here in our terminal, let's run our application. So let's type node. And then our JS file is called server. So node server. And as you can see, we have app listening on port 3000. So now we know that our app is listening to that port. 
and as you can see it doesn't stop running it's always running it's always listening to requests and this is what we need for our backend of course to listen to requests so that we can respond to them now first thing i want to do is i'm going to create our first api and also just keep in mind that this is not the best practice now this is still the first episode we're going to do it the easiest way possible and then we're going to start separating into different folders different files and follow best conventions and better methods of course so first thing i want to do now is create a get api and i'm going to explain the methods you have four different methods uh, more than four different methods but the most common ones are four which are post get put and delete if you don't know them yet don't worry we're going to be uh, explaining them and practicing them so you will be comfortable with them also if you're not comfortable with the json format yet or you just heard about it don't worry as we as we go with the series you're going to be very familiar with those terms and you're going to be able to do to, to use them in your back end and apis and you will just get used to it let's now create our first api it's going to be uh, a get api so app.get this is the method and then here we need to specify the route the endpoint so let's say slash high for example and then we need to create a function which is going to be executed when a request calls this route here and then um, we need to pass in two parameters request and response request is going to be the request object which is being sent and response is the resp response that we're going to reply to to that request with so here what we're going to do is respond so res which is the response dot send and then let's just say hello now to test this api we're going to use a tool a very popular tool called postman if you don't have it you can install it for free i'm going to keep a uh, link in the description so we can go ahead and install it now here we can create requests to test our apis so if we take, go back to our api as, as you can see it's a get method so here the request type should be get as you can see we have post put patch delete and as i told you previously get post put and delete are the main ones the main request methods and since our api is of type get we're gonna specify get there and then here we have the route which is high and we have the port which is 3000 so as i told you previously the port is hard coded now but then we're going to put it in a configuration file and follow best practices but for now let's go back here and now since we're working locally our domain name is going to be localhost and we need to specify the port which is 3000 which we specified it like that and then the endpoint is high because we specified it here as that so slash high and now if we try to run it it won't uh, work because we're not running our application we would have to type in node server again and run it our app is listening on port 3000 let's go back to postman and hit send and as you can see here on the bottom it says hello which is the response that we specified now usually our responses would be in json format since it's a restful api to make it a little bit more interesting and realistic i'm going to create an object and we're going to return it in our response so let's say constant students it's going to be an array of javascript objects which is going to be which is going to be a list of students here so okay, here it should be equal and then let's say each student has an id a name and let's say a gpa and i'm gonna create more students so let's go ahead and create more students let's give it an id of two three let's call this john really okay now this uh, api uh, this route i'm gonna change the endpoint to students let's say and then here in the response what we're going to do is we're going to return the students object which is 
an array of objects, an array of students. If we save that, by the way, if we do save that and now go back here, don't be surprised, but it's not going to work. It's not going to change. It's going to still be hello because we need to stop the server and then run it again. And don't worry, I'm going to show you a better package. But for now, if we press send, not found. And that's because we changed our route. It's no longer high. Now it's students. So if you go back to Postman, and then here we replace that with students and press send again. As you can see, our response is a JSON, which is an array of objects, and each object is a student. Now, of course, this data will be uh, from a database. It will be coming from a database. And in this tutorial, we're going to be doing it in this series, not this episode. So stay tuned. And I want to show you one more thing, which is a package that is very common and very popular, which is called Nodemon. So let's install it, npm i or npm install, and let's type nodemon. Now I already have this package, so I'm not going to install it again. But basically, instead of typing node, we're going to be typing nodemon, and then let's run our server.js file, so enter. And now it's listening, but the difference now is that if we have any changes, so let's say now I'm returning hi again, if I save, as you can see the application restarted, I no longer have to stop it from running and then execute it again so now if press send as you can see it updated without me having to stop the server from running i'm gonna go back to students returning students and as you can see wait let me save now after saving if i go back to postman and send as you can see it's refreshing on its own thank you for watching um, i'm gonna be releasing a new episode very soon and stay tuned subscribe Turn on the notifications, leave a like if it helped you, it would really motivate me uh, to keep on uploading more and more videos, and see you next time.